Hello all. I wanted to let you see what we were doing with um, my baskets that I'm going to be using for my dresser that's in my bathroom project. So I have my brother here and I'm going to let him walk you through so that if anybody decides they like to do something like it, this would be a nice DIY. I had did some research on the baskets. The baskets cost about twenty to thirty dollars each for a fifteen by fifteen and I found out in looking at comments that the baskets shed the uh, wicker baskets shed when you're using them in and out so I decided that um, if my brother would make me some that would be the better way for me to go so here we go so this is Fred alright got them in uh, the, to make a box it takes two sides of uh, 13 by 13 and three sides by 11 to 13. That'd be the bottom, the top, and the back are all 11 by 13. I take the two by two, cut it to the same length of all of them for the space for the bottom to be attached, flush. I'm gonna glue it, attach the bottom to two of these, and then walk around the sides with the rest of the 11. And what I forgot to share with you is he purchased what type of wood and, and what size? How much it's was it? Two by twos, eight foot. It takes two eight footers to make these four boxes. And for the plywood, there's two sheets of four by eight uh, with a lot of leftovers. So you could probably make three more or maybe four more boxes. And what we discovered that at um, hey, Home Depot, oh, Home this. Depot was we were able hey, to. Uh, a little guy. Hey, hey. Okay, so what I was saying was we uh, found out that from Home Depot we were able to ask them to cut our squares for us. So we had eight squares cut 11 by 13 and we had six cut by Are you this? Mm -hmm. we had six cut by 13 by 13, right? Yeah. No, eight and no. six is not 13. No. 12 cut by 11 by, thir 11 by 13. Mm -hmm. And eight cut by thirteen by thirteen. Right. Okay. Right. And then once this is all done, and I get my cabinet done, and the reason I'm showing you this is because I'm crocheting the fabric to go around my boxes in the dark brown. And they're going to even look kind of similar to a wicker basket once we're done. So um, I just wanted you to see the whole thing before we get done with the finished project. Yeah, don't try to put all the screws all the way down. It's just balancing in the air. So just get your screws in and then... I don't know if you saw the spot where we were talking, but he put some glue right where he's screwing those in at, and we use that nail glue. That's just to make your boxes sturdy. Yeah, they over time, pulling them in and out, they wear out. And another suggestion, and if you want to, you can also cut a hole right here and put your handle in if you want. But what I'm going to do since I crochet, I'm just going to crochet a handle on the front of my fabric that, I, that I'm making. And I'll show you all that when I'm done. But this is a great DIY. And uh, I'll come back to you in a little, little bit after I get all, all of them done. Okay, so here's the box. Done. That's the inside. haven't decided if I'm going to put fabric in there or what. I'm just using it for storage bins all together and then once I do my crocheting um, I'll show you the finished product. Alright. This is the box. I didn't put anything around the back of it to finish it off. If I was going to be pulling it out and using it a lot I would have finished off the back but I didn't but I still can if I'd like I just crochet onto here and go straight up but uh, I wanted to show you I'm, I was uh, finishing off the boxes so I wanted to show you what it looked like um, while I was doing it so I bought some fabric at my local Joanne Fabrics and uh, my box ended up being the size of 13 and a half by 12 by 13 alright when it was finished 
and then I bought some fabric and I cut four pieces of these of this fabric and they came out to 38 by 32 was the size of the fabric so what I've done is in the corners I'm hot gluing this in so I'll walk you through what I'm doing right now I'm on the last one when I decided I might as well tape it video it so I just take my corners because they're at a point and I just lay some glue across the top of them fold it in half then inside the box I just put some glue in here along the top edge like that and then I take the middle and just lay it in there Now my raw edges I've decided I was going to buy some rope I'll show you a finished box what I'm going to do with instead of buying rope I'm just going to make rope out of string I'm going to crochet or make a chain stitch a thick one and then I'm going to go around the edge to finish it off so it'll be look really nice so from this point I go and I do my middle points with my hot glue and I have glue sticks. I ran out of my really, really long glue sticks. So now I'm just using just my regular glue sticks. And my hot gun. Alright. So, what I'm going to do is just put some glue right here. A little piece of glue right there. Find my middle. That's my middle. And lay it on there as close to the edge as I can. If you wait too long and talk like I'm doing, it'll dry really fast. So, I need to push some more glue there. Alright. Now, I'll come over on this side. So, I'll do all around the box right quick. And it doesn't take real long. This side is a lot more material over here. So, or you can put it right on the fabric. All right. Probably when I put this one in here, I should have made sure that my um, the longest part was here and the shortest part was there, but I didn't do that. But I still should have enough fabric. I bought a little over two yards, and I had them cut me two pieces. So when I got home, I, I didn't really have anywhere to lay it out at. Alright, find the middle point. Come over here. Shoot some glue on it right there. Middle point. And lay it. Okay. So I got those points done. And then what I do is I take each point like this. And bring it to its middle. So I do that all the way around. And this just kind of helps give me a nice little layered look inside the box. And um, finish it off. This is my third box. I have one more box to do. All right. And turn your work. Find your middle point. Put some glue there. And I'm not doing a lot. I'm only doing about that, that much right there. Push it sometime. It comes through. gets on your fingers. No problem. Find my middle point. Little inch piece. I just keep doing that all the way around until I basically just fold it into itself. Fun, as I call it, a DIY project. Baskets are pretty expensive, so I paid this. This was this 
fabric was six dollars six dollars a uh, yard so I think I paid five eighty something for each piece she cut me I cut 15s by 35 inches by 35 inches that's what I had her cut 235 okay so my glue gets down I just put some more glue in there I think I probably bought that at Joann's or Michael's my two stores I go to here in my area all right almost there so fun when you get to do this so now i am uh, got it all done it's not done but see how it's coming together now I'm gonna go back and do the same thing and just pick a spot and fold it into itself put a little dot there I just keep doing that. Probably a little bit more time consuming, but when it's done, it just looks so nice. And then by having these layers like this, uh, when I start adding my stuff down in the bottom of the box, uh, I didn't want the fabric uh, getting caught up with it because I'm not going to glue it to the box anymore. I want to be able to just lift up the fabric and shake it out if needed to be since I'm not going to be able to wash it. But I'll be able to pick it up like this and shake it out. Any crumbs or different things that, not crumbs like food, but just clean it out a little bit. Brush it out, whatever I need to do. So I'm loving it. I think I picked a really good um, fabric. I tried to bring out the walls and every color the color in my bathroom and you're really only going to see this when you pull out the drawers you got to use it you know it's just a little added touch to but just think if you had some of these baskets just if I had them here in my room in my crochet room to put my yarns and stuff in there's just so many ways you can go with this and now that I know I can get my my pieces of wood cut before I bring them home, then I can just use the drill and do it myself. All right, well, I've gone this far, so I might as well just keep going, huh? Let you see it all. Loving doing these little projects. Always love to be a blessing to people as people have been a blessing to me. I can't wait till I do the last part when I put my and I just thought of this lately because when I finished the other two I kept I did not like that raw edge up here even though I brought when I crocheted I brought it up as high as I could I thought about it last night to finish it off with a cord so I was thinking I had to go to the store buy some rope and then I was ah I have all this yarn I can make my own rope right okay so now coming together all you sores out there so what do I do now this point I'm going to everything should be pretty dry I'm gonna finish it off by just finding a spot find out and fold it into itself like this one right here 2-2 two, two, I'm gonna lay it flat so I'm gonna take this side Put some glue on top of the fabric and lay it down. You see that? So I can turn it like that. Can you see that? 
So I'm going to take this piece of fabric right here, put some glue on this side, and then lay it down. Now this piece is just hanging there. I'm going to cut it off. It's in my way. Alright, and then I open it up a little bit, shoot a little glue in there and close it. That's the finishing touches. I think I still need my scissors. See something I don't like here. Little piece just hanging. There we go. Alright, and then I'll take these two right here. See these two? And I'm going to lay this one down that way, and I'm going to lay this one down this way. So I'll put a little piece of glue right there, lay it down, come over on this side, put a little glue over here, and lay that one down. Then I go inside because there's a little opening there, put my gun and push a little bit in there, not a lot, you don't need a lot. And I just close it up. And that way anything you're putting in there, it's enough material down here where it's not going to pull it from around the edges. Okay, then I turn and I just keep going. Finding my two here on the corner. See them? Just lay them down. These two lay this way, these two lay this way. See there? And if I have some little extra, I can kind of turn it, tuck it down in there. Give it a flush edge, see there? So now I'm going over top of another one. Over here. Doing the same thing. Now sometimes what I'll do is take, since if there's like an opening right there, I'll take a little piece of glue and squeeze the two together like that. Push it down. Then, when I want to lay it this way, I'll pull it a little bit. There we go. And then I open it up. Get a little glue in there. Close it. Okay. Now I'm going to do that all the way around. I'm not going to make you watch me all the way around. I got this side. Well, let me finish this one over here so you see one whole side done. And I'll do the other three and I'll come back show you the finished part before I um, um, make my cording, make my roping or whatever. So right here for this corner, here there's two pieces. There's one right, and you'll see it as you're doing it. It's right here and right here. So I want to lay them out that way. So this one ends up laying over what I've already done here. This one ends up laying just into the corner, okay? So I'm gonna straighten up my fabric down there. Now if I wanted to, I could have took a sewing machine and sewed my raw edges so I wouldn't have no raw edges, but I knew I'm gonna put some piping over it, so I didn't know. But I, I do know now. So I'm gonna put some glue right there and then lay that one over like that. And then come over here and get this one. Put some glue across and pull that one over. And then anywhere there's a little opening, shoot some glue. And then there's some opening right here. Shoot some glue. This glue is wonderful. Right here. All right, and just. All right, so. Get on my little stringies. Alright. So, what do you think? I'm loving it. I'll be back. Alright. I'll be back and um, we'll go from there. Okay, I'm back. And... I'm getting ready to go around the edge of the box. So what I've done is taken my yarn. I chained 250 
230 chains and then I did a half double crochet and a half double is half double is a yarn over I went into the back loop of the chain and drop off all three alright that's all I'm gonna do and then I'm gonna tie it off and weave it down through my work and hot glue it on so my thought is uh, I'll probably just lay it down here in the glue so it'll be up underneath and you won't see it okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in the back here I'm gonna lay it down go from here turn the corner and go down to that edge turn the corner as I'm gluing go down to that edge turn the corner go down to that edge and overlap those together I used um, an F hook to do the chain stitch and I used a larger hook to do the half doubles no I didn't I stayed with this I used this just to do the half double alright so I'm gonna go all the way around the box with the glue uh, I'll start it here not really it's kinda awkward to see but I went around and I trimmed everything with my scissors and then my thought is I'm just going to I think I'm going to start right here because there's nothing back here so I'm going to start right there and just hot glue as I go and I'm not really stretching it or tightening it too much because I made it true to size so I'm going to put some hot glue right on top I think I'm going to do a little bit at a time because the hot glue dries so fast. I'm going to lay my tail right down on the back of there. I'm going to just lay it there. And my thought is then the you'll see the outside of the chain stitch right there so I'll let you get close on that and see there and I'll bring it all the way down to here turn the corner and keep on going okay and then that's the inside after I went all the way around it I'm still cleaning it up Alright, I think it's going to be beautiful. I filmed this part because I wanted to show you how beautiful it comes together. This part right here, when you put the glue right down in the middle on this wood, and you lay that on there, don't pull it real tight, just lay it on there. And when you squeeze it, it's, this glue is just going to squeeze those two materials together right there. And you won't even see it it's beautiful look at there just like I made it like that it was supposed to be like that <laughs> it's all coming together very very pleased alright and then when I get right to that corner I just sit it in there and then I just turn it and lay it right on in there and then it matches up perfectly with this one be seamless I just thought that was worthy. Now I hate that the back part that I didn't finish it will totally off. So when you do yours, do the whole thing. So that way you can just take your box out and sit it wherever you want to sit it. I was just thinking because mine is under the counter and pulling it in and out, you wouldn't see the back. But when you go through all this trouble to do stuff like that, finish off your piece. 
and I may go ahead and finish it off and just add it right on there you'll never know but right now everything else looks really good I just feel like all that work I've done to it should have completed the whole basket but otherwise than that I'm very pleased with it all right well I hope you enjoy uh, enjoyed this video I really enjoyed making it and uh, I want to say be blessed because you are blessed by the best I'm working right now <laughs> my phone's just not ringing but I'll say hi take care and love you bye bye <laughs>